Good morning, everybody. Happy Tuesday. Yes, I am wearing a bathrobe because it's just that kind of day. But we're not talking about the bathrobe. We're talking about the Seahawks and their young players. How are things going with these guys? How are they developing? What direction are we going in? You guys know the drill. So let's go ahead and take a look at where we are after Sunday's game. So... We're going to start with running backs like we always do, and it's not exactly going great here. Not because I think either guy played particularly poorly on Sunday. I think that uh, Walker, for the little bit that he played, was fine. And I think that Charbonnet, he's, uh, the numbers weren't really there, but overall I thought he played. He played, and I don't think he did anything egregiously wrong or left anything really bad on the table out there. It just... Uh, there weren't a lot of opportunities for him, and he continues to be a good passing game option, both for his blocking and his receiving, so I'm still pretty high on both these guys, relatively speaking. Uh, if Walker's season is over, he comes up just short of 800 yards, but Carroll has said a couple times now that he doesn't think Walker's going to miss a ton of time. So I'll believe it when I see it because it's an oblique injury that he already described as being pretty serious, but we'll see where this goes. Obviously, if Walker can come, can come back soon, then that means something, but uh, I would be very surprised if we didn't have to get through at least one game without him on Thursday night. But uh, Walker, for the little bit that he played, was fine. Charbonnet played okay. I mean, obviously, 3.1 yards of carry is not going to make you any friends, but um, he um, did do some stuff in the passing game as well, and he does continue to show you that he is a valuable member of this offense, even though the numbers sometimes don't back it up. But uh, not his best game, we'll uh, definitely say that. And we could have used his best game, given the fact that Walker missed so much time. All right, so those are your running backs. Let's move on to wide receiver here. JSN made three catches, including uh, one really nice one where he mossed the uh, opposing defensive back. Really cool looking play. But again, it's another game where JSN's impact is felt early. Early on, JSN is doing stuff. As the game goes on, you don't notice him very much. He's very quiet in the last few quarters of a game, it seems like. But he's still out there grinding, still out there part of things, sure. And Bobo caught one pass for eight yards. PFF grade fell a little bit to 75.5, but he's still doing his thing. All right, so those are your skill players for the offense. Now let's go to the offensive line where I do actually have some really good news. Charles Cross played a remarkable game. No penalties, no QB pressures allowed, despite being on an offensive line that overall didn't play great. Charles Cross played excellent his run block grade went up a little bit, but his overall grade went up several points because his pass block grade was sterling. It was like 90-something. So if you're looking for anything to really get excited about right now, it's that Charles Cross looks like he's really getting into form here. I understand that the Rams can't challenge Charles Cross the same way some of these other teams. Like, we're going to be playing the, um, the 49ers here soon, and they're going to be able to throw much better pass rushers at Cross than teams like the Rams, but I would still say that what Cross did in that game on Sunday was really impressive, and if you're looking for one guy to really be enamored with right now, it's probably Cross. Lucas and Oluwatimi didn't play. Bradford did. He allowed one QB pressure. His grades fell a little bit. Run block grade still pretty good, 66.2. Overall grade is workable, 60.5. I'm going to stick to my guns here, though. If you want to play Bradford, then start Bradford and play him the whole game. If you want to play Haynes, then you start Haynes and you play him the whole game. I don't think this rotation thing needs to be a line-wide trend. Like, I understand doing it a little bit for Peters because he's so old, but now if you're just doing it for the sake of doing it, uh, that's, a, that's a problem. Not, not going to get behind that. So, yeah. Bradford played fine for the little bit that he played, I guess. Nothing to really note other than the fact that he played. All right, now we swing around to the defense here. Cameron Young had one tackle. PFF grade went up a tiny bit. He only played six snaps, so there's very little to evaluate there. I don't know what else to say other than he played, he was physically present on screen for a little bit, and he didn't embarrass himself, so that's good, right? 
nothing with linebacker, edge rusher. So Boye Mafe got shut out. Zero tackles, zero sacks. I know he probably got a little bit of pressure. We'll talk more about that later in the week, but uh, no box score stats for Boye Mafe. Now, it is worth noting that his PFF grade went up a tiny bit to 80 flat. So I'm not saying he played poorly. In fact, I think he probably played quite well, given what he could control. I mean, the, the, the Rams' offense didn't do that much in that game. The Rams' offense was held well under 300 yards. Stafford was held under 200 passing. Um, they were pretty inefficient. So the defense mostly played well, and Mafe's a big part of that. But uh, no impact in terms of stats. Derek Hall, who barely played in this game, he played about as much as Cam Young, had one tackle, PFF grade was basically stagnant. Um, maybe it dropped a little bit. Let me check. Uh, yes, it did drop by 0.1. So not really meaningful at all. And um, look, he's on the team, right? He's on the team. You got to figure this out. I don't think him sitting on the sideline and playing six snaps is doing anybody any favors. Either play him or make him inactive and activate somebody else. Like... Straight up, I think Tyreek Smith could give us more than six snaps. And we need those stupid snaps right now because right now Frank Clark is playing way too many. And Frank Clark, like I said, doesn't seem to have anything to give. All right, cornerback has been the fun category for most of the year. Um, Woolen have picked up a few tackles and a pick and some uh, passes broken up. So, overall, Woolen had a really good game, didn't allow a lot in coverage, did his job, took the ball away on the flea flicker. Unfortunately, because we lost that game, people are really going to get stuck on that illegal hands to the face, which they should. I mean, it's a bad penalty. It's the same penalty that he committed a few weeks ago against Cleveland, and you would think he would learn from that, but it seems like he didn't. So, this is now a running trend where... We have a clear instance of him almost costing us a win because of a penalty and then him committing the exact same penalty in pretty much the exact same situation a month later. That tells me that it's not getting coached right or he's not receiving the coaching right. He did play a good game. His PFF grades almost back up to 70. There weren't there there were plenty of good things to talk about with Woolen, but that third and 15th penalty is going to haunt us. If he doesn't commit that penalty, I really feel like we gut that one out. It wouldn't have been pretty, but we would have gutted it out. Witherspoon, awesome game by Witherspoon overall. He got whistled with a bogus penalty in the end zone, but he had eight tackles, and he made another play on the ball past deflection. He had a sack on the blitz. So Witherspoon continues to whoop everybody's butt. PFF grade up to 84.8, so no criticisms there. He is the guy. He is the man. He is doing it right now. Witherspoon, nothing but positive things to say about him overall. Um, he did pick up one penalty for, I, I think they were going to let him get away with it, but then he started doing his uh, He-Man celebration thing, and that pushed it over the edge. So, okay, knock that off. Don't get me wrong. Like, that made you look stupid, but we've got to pick on the next play. So, whatever. And Jarek Reed had one tackle, had, I'm sorry, no tackles on special teams. All right, see you guys later. Go Hawks.